In the age of the internet, becoming the latest fad doesn't require a university degree. Take dropouts like Bill Gates and Ndu and Tuli. Who? Yes, Mdu Ntuli. Ironically, for Ntuli, he was studying a BSc degree in computer science at the University of the Witwatersrand, with the idea of becoming a cartoonist first took root. This is Viral Friday. I'm Bruce Whitfield, and tonight I'm joined by Mdu Ntuli to discuss how he'd taken his brand viral. Um, so you wanted to have a proper job. Your parents paid a lot of money for you to go to university. You spent two years studying, and then you dropped out. You yep. must have been a great disappointment. <laughs> Uh, actually, it was a, a blessing in disguise. I, I just, uh, you know, always felt uh, I had passion for comic books and animation. And then I did a, a, a cartoon when I was in varsity for an internal newspaper, and everybody loved it. And I said, oh, okay. And eventually that led me to get a job working for Rico of the Medium and Eve, um, and also doing some uh, Sunday Times newspapers and stuff. And I said, well, you can actually get paid doing cartoons. And that's it. That was it for me. I was like, yeah. <laughs> okay, so you bail on your studies in your second year. There wasn't any temptation to at least get a degree behind your name. You thought, I'm an artist, I'm a, re I'm a rebel, I'm uh, going to be changing the world through humour. Um, actually, I did uh, get a lot of information from my uh, computer science uh, course in, in, in VETS. In fact, that actually led me to actually de develop a game. Uh, actually, these two things are actually very much integrated, uh, this uh, animation and cartooning and and programming, you know, most gaming online and stuff, it's actually those two things, it's just that I'm able to do both of the things alone, yay. Yeah, I mean, but, that, but that's the point, I mean, if you look at some of the most successful internet billionaires, Larry Ellison, um, Bill Gates, uh, B Paul, what's his face, who started uh, Microsoft with Bill Gates, um, and a bunch of others as well, including uh, Mark Zuckerberg from, from Facebook, all university dropouts, simply because the education system doesn't seem to be evolved enough yet to cope with the, with the internet economy. I mean, that's, that's the sense of it, certainly, that I get. Yeah, well, the number one driver for me was actually passion. You know, uh, once I realized that actually um, in the country there's just, there's just a space for this uh, industry. I mean, um, I, I saw Disney and how they were running their business. Uh, I, I saw how um, uh, newspapers actually you find Garfield in our local newspapers mm. everywhere. And I said, whoa, this is actually a chance. Uh, together with the ability to draw and what I've learned a bit from Rico again, uh, I decided, okay, let me just try and make a, a newspaper, comic strip, try to, and there was no chance, unfortunately, for me. So I had to learn extra skill on actually turning these uh, still images into motion. I mean, now that's the point, isn't it? Because you start out producing still images in the same way as Madame and Eve is a cartoon strip. Yeah. You developed your own cartoon strips, yes. which you then put into newspapers around the country, and then you've gone into short animations. Yes, I did sh uh, short animations. In fact, my, my first attempt was a, a show called a Zulu boy and Rudolf, which is a Zulu guy and an alien uh, sharing a roommate, and there are heroes in the country saving us from evil Naga, the guy from Swaziland. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are, are you xenophobic at all? I no, mean, no. Uh, is there uh, not a risk of being accused of being xenophobic? No. Because we're very delicate about cartoons in South Africa, you may have noticed. Uh, I don't believe in that. I mean, people speak. I mean, uh, as soon as you turn off, uh, everybody goes at home, they speak freely. And I, as an artist, I think I speak about those things publicly. You know, just, okay, you think, uh, we think about these, about these people, same thing. I say, no, no. <laughs> we all say bad things about each other, we all say good things about each other, we just need to admit it. And there's nothing wrong about it, that's how we learn from each other, I think. And bringing that in public, and it becomes funny how you deliver it using cartoons. Well, yeah. let, let's, see, well let's see the first. You brought us two clips. Let's watch the first of the two clips and then take me through it afterwards. Well, Rudolph, what are you watching? Discovery. Discovery? Don't play here, man. Put as a do. Ah, uh, never. I don't like Earthlings music, it's too loopy. You think it's Imenemene and Dr. Dle? It's Umbakang, Soul Bladders, Collection, Volume 3. I get on. No, Zulu boy, no, I want to watch Discovery. Lady, give me the remote before I hit you with my isbu. No! Ta ta ta! Ah! Ludolf. I'll hit you, Dwardmark. There's a hell of a lot going on in there. I mean, there's global influence, there's South African influence, there's black and white, there's a whole bunch of cultural intermingling going on. Take me through it. What's the thinking? Yeah, uh, actually, that, that's happening at Rendo most of the time. Uh, sometimes when you make something, you're actually focusing on your story, and then as you're working on it, you just discover some elements at random. Some of them is just a voiceover artist making a mistake. Uh, uh, 
I mean, you, you, I got a guy from the suburbia doing a voice. I've got a guy from the street township doing a voice. And put these guys in an abnormal scenario and it becomes a nice entertaining content. Mm -hmm. And that's how I, I work. Now, how do you distribute that? How, how does a cartoonist who is now on the cutting edge of technology, on the cutting edge of an industry that we don't yet know how it's going to evolve, how do you make money out of it? How have you turned it into a business? Uh, how you distribute it, I use uh, YouTube, or basically internet or all the social media platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. Uh, the, the, the thing is, you don't make money from actually uh, marketing yourself. You actually show uh, the corporate guys that actually, hey, this is a medium of communicating. Try and use it for your, for your I mean, because there's some language that doesn't really get across. Uh, if you try and read a note from a chartered accountant and give it to them, the average Joe was like, what the heck is this? Yeah. <laughs> you know, but if you, you say, oh, look, uh, hey, my brother, I use that street lingo, he, he will draw to that. So I discovered that actually it is, I'm selling language in a nice, colorful, visual uh, uh, way, you know, and how you distribute it is just basically using social network and then the private sector guys will notice, hey, this is actually a good way of communicating, then they call you and they give you a job to uh, help them communicate with the masses. So this is really a marketing tool yeah. then to get a, a foot in the door in the corporate world. So yeah. Nedbank or Santa Bank or Bidvest, for example, wants to communicate a message to workers through an intranet system. Yeah. I'll come to say, Mdu, create this particular message for us. Yeah, yes, actually, um, I've done so many jobs um, for, I mean, people come to me with a 32-page booklet of some technical information and I convert that into a 30 second video that just everybody gets it just like that and save time and it's much more reusable over and that's the business that I'm in, uh, discovered. But, but you're, in the you're in the business of supplying solutions then to corporates? Yes, uh, communication solution, yes. Mm. As an artist, does that not undermine the art or is the art the vehicle you use to get into, uh, into making some money because ultimately artists have to eat, I suppose. Yeah, artists have to eat. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> Uh, you can make money from YouTube, but it's not going to be enough to pay the rent. <laughs> no, no a, couple of guys, a couple of guys do very well out of YouTube. Do you, do you generate advertising from YouTube? We also see the little ads sort of uh, coming up underneath the, 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 Google ad, the Google ads come up underneath the YouTube. Yes, you, you do make the, the money, but it's, it's not enough really to, to make a living out of. The guy who really make the good payment is the, the private sector guys and yeah. the government. Tell me about Gorgo Molloy. Gorgo Molloy has taken the world by storm. <laughs> Gorgum Loy is just a, a character that I created back in 2010. She's actually a Sangoma um, from Lesotho. Together with this Valian from Switzerland, they are not happy with the fact that uh, their country is surrounded by South Africa, so they want to take <laughs> over <laughs> the, the whole thing. So uh, Gorgum Loy is just a Sangoma, is just representing that uh, supernatural stuff that people do, and uh, that's where I can make risk with the hair and say, oh, this is what people do, actually, in that, in that uh, kind of stuff. Now, I mean, we all grew up with the cartoons. We all grew up with Peanuts. We all grew up with Garfield. You're, you're changing the cartoon demographic, or certainly trying to change the cartoon demographic. Why are your cartoons talking to South Africans in a way that Garfield, bless him, doesn't? Well, I've been making cartoons for years. I mean, I even tried making a, a superhero cartoon. And there's a reason why superhero cartoons don't work here. There's no. Uh, 120 story buildings. <laughs> it's too hot to wear a cape and stuff and tight, so that just doesn't work. People like the nice, simple street lingo cartoons in this country, and that's what they relate to. Let's watch another, let's watch another clip and say, get a sense of what it is that you're up to. Fagan a fan, Fagan a con, Gal. Foot and a pity, nay, Lala Pans. And you're going to kiss the Amyak Dal and keep it guns. Hey, Lali Glag and Telen has Lava Gokovak Dala Bravacon. Nego muito fã na gente, o poeta. Beijos, beijos. Again, I mean, Boyd is a real person. 
Yes. <laughs> uh, Boiti is a South African personality, yes. um, and here you are using the name Boiti in your cartoons. Do you get into trouble? Uh, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the way I think this cartoon was delivered, I think it's sort of a compliment and, and appreciating mm -hmm. maybe the beauty of women. That's the positive thing I can say about it, but uh, I'm just making fun uh, with the, the whole stuff. I mean, but, but, but here we go. I mean, you're going back into culture. You're going back, you get the straw mat out. And there's, uh, there's, hold on a second, the straw mat, I don't know how the gore was managed. <laughs> um, you, you're paying homage, you're paying respect, you, you're going across generations, and I think you, you, you're matching a mood um, of South African society in the 21st century. Yep, uh, there's just so many nice classic stories that were not delivered back then, and this, this way is a chance to actually show that there, there's so many things that, uh, you know, funny things that used to happen in a Shabin back in the mm. days and whatnot. Those stories that we stole them, we just share them and make them public. And it actually, I think it's working quite well. Now, I mean, you were mentored by, by Rico. Can mm. I say that, I suppose? You, he, he helped you, guide you in the early days. Are you passing, passing on the, the love of cartoons to other, to other young people? Yes, uh, in fact, I've discovered there's another guy is, is doing Rams comics. I believe he actually was also inspired. There's also another new, a uh, lot of other challenges are coming. We see this, this is actually, a, a, a nice I industry to, to be in. Um, um, it's just I wish the guys could learn how to actually do the, the business of it because they think it's one thing to pull the numbers and, and, nothing, and, and, and another thing to make the money. So uh, I, I believe I inspire a lot of guys to actually get into this uh, industry. So what's the future then from doing Tuli? I mean, the, the, you run the risk of sort of being called into, being taken into a graphic design studio. Do you stay independent? Do you, do you operate independently, continue supplying your services across the, the corporate market? Uh, I have a vision. I, I still want to push it. Um, I'm seeing a theme park build with our own characters like Disney did. The first one in Africa, I really believe that's possible. Uh, I'm seeing a restaurant for content creators. That's how far ahead I see this thing. So I'm going to keep doing what so I'm doing. So get an African version of Hard Rock Cafe, get an mm. African version of, of Disney. I, is there a pan-African model for this? Or is humor and our cartoons very regional? Could you take this to Zambia? Could you take it to the DRC? Could you take it to Nigeria yeah. or, or, or to Kenya? Or would you not want to risk it simply because the nuances are so different? Uh, I, I, in fact, I'm, I'm making uh, such moves. I've realized that it depends on how far a South African language can spread. I mean, most guys in Namibia, Zimbabwe, they identify the language so it works. Uh, there's other cultures, if you say Kokumloi, Sangoma is not something that's unique to South Africa. It goes to Nigeria. Mm. All those stories, they, they can be shared in this format as well. So uh, it's something we keep trying and learning every day and try to improve as we, we go with it. Watch the space. Next time your kids say to you, I want to drop out of university, make sure they're going to go and do it for something useful. Cartoonist Ndu and Tuli shaking up the world of South African and possibly African cartoons for the future as well. Thank you for watching. There'll be more tonight, tomorrow. Till then, good night.